You look at a ham radio forum and, you know, some guy's posted about a problem that he's having. It's often the same response. My audio's distorted. What should I do? Is your gear connected to a ground rod? I get bad SWR. What will I do? Ground rod? I have common mode current. Is your radio grounded? My antenna doesn't get out. Ground rod? Here's your typical ham radio operator today. All their gear is hooked up to the magic ground rod that magically drains away all their problems into the ground. This is among the biggest myths in ham radio, and here's why. RF does not behave like the 60-cycle AC you get from the power company. They are different animals. Can you use a high-power audio amplifier as a linear RF amp for your ham station? No. Well, why not? They both just use electricity. No. Audio and RF behave differently. Well, if ground rods don't work, why does the power company install a ground rod at the service entrance? Because at 60 hertz, the entire earth is like a giant endless resistor. The rod channels into the earth a power surge, for example, and spreads it out through the soil. Well, why doesn't that happen at RF frequencies? What's the wavelength of 60 cycles? It's over 3,000 miles. If you had a dipole antenna for 60 cycles, it'd be 1,500 miles long. So how does an 8-foot ground rod look to 60 cycles? A tiny speck, a point. 8 feet compared to 3,000 miles. At that frequency, the ground rod works as a safety current sink. Now, let's look at RF frequencies. Your ground rod no longer looks like a tiny point. The 8-foot ground rod and its cable are now big enough to be an antenna. And at RF frequencies, the earth no longer appears as a purely resistive conductor. It now has significant inductance and capacitance and presents a high impedance to RF. In the RF world, the Earth is a really terrible conductor. Most of the RF reflects back up the ground rod or just heats up the surrounding soil a bit. Congratulations! You now have a lousy 8-foot antenna driven into the ground. So, according to the ARRL, antenna engineer Walt Maxwell, W2DU, antenna engineer Tom Roche, W8JI, and RF engineer Yuri Van Doren, who has this terrific myth-free website, there is no such thing as a universal RF ground that magically drains away unwanted RF. It doesn't just vanish into the dirt. The ground wire becomes another part of your antenna system. The idea of an RF ground is a myth. So what is the way to treat unwanted RF like common mode current on the shield of a coax cable? For a dipole, use a one-to-one current ballon at the antenna feed point. That blocks common mode current. For an in-fed half wave, put a good one-to-one current ballon on the coax at least before it comes into the shack. For a vertical, vertical's got to have radials. Using a ground rod instead of radials for a vertical antenna turns that antenna into an air-cooled dummy load. Remember, the Earth is a poor conductor at RF frequencies. Inside the shack, put RF chokes like you see here on every cable. 
including computer cables like USB cables. You need these to stop unwanted RF current. Also, bond all equipment together with short, wide copper straps or braid. This keeps everything at the same RF potential, stopping currents from flowing between your gear. If you want good RF performance and a quiet shack, no crazy problems caused by RF floating around, forget the idea of the magic RF drain rod. At RF, everything is an antenna. Remember the old song, Bobbles, Bangles, and Beads? Let's change it to Bonding, Balance, and Chokes. Consider subscribing to this channel. Ring the bell for updates in 73.